How's it going guys? Brian Cusco here at Triple B. As promised in last week's episode, today we are going to learn to use a Punnett square. You're watching Triple B TV. Okay, so I gotta be honest with you guys, I am pretty tired, my head hurts, but the show must go on. But please forgive me, I'm only human. I am going to do my best to walk you through some of this stuff. For those of you that learned this stuff a long time ago, just please bear with us as we try to bring everybody up to speed with how to do some of the basic stuff here on a Punnett Square, and then we'll get into some more advanced stuff. We're gonna cover something as simple as a normal to a normal, and we'll work up to something like a lavender albino retic to a, a white phase albino retic. And also, if you didn't watch last week's episode and you're not up to speed on your genetic terminology, you definitely want to stop this video, go back and watch last week's episode, episode 72, and get a little refresher course on some of your genetic terminology that we're going to be using here today in this video, so you can kind of stick with us and come along for the ride. So a Punnett square is basically a tool that you can use to determine the outcome of a pairing of a couple of your snakes. To make things simple, we're going to start out with a normal to normal and show you what it looks like. Each one of these letters represents an allele on one of the chromosomes for a diploid species. This is the chromosome that was given by mom, this is the chromosome that was given by dad. So I use lowercase letters anytime I'm using the wild type or normal phenotype and anytime I'm trying to express any kind of morph I use the uppercase letter. That's just how I do it. Some people do it a little differently using simple recessive versus incomplete dominant traits, but that's just how I do it. Anytime you see a lowercase letter, it means that's a normal allele. Let's use ends. So dad's a normal, has two normal alleles. Mom's a normal, has two normal alleles. Each parent has the opportunity to pass on only normal. That's the only thing they can do. They're both carrying the normal allele on both chromosomes. So when they pass on to their offspring, they're passing on one chromosome. In the case of the mom, passes on one of the X chromosomes or, or the other X chromosome. In the case of the dad, passes on an X chromosome or a Y chromosome. Normal and normal. This is the most simple Punnett square you're ever going to see. Dad can pass on a normal allele and mom can pass on a normal allele. So you cross them over and all the babies are going to get a normal allele from both mom and dad. So you have 100% normals in that clutch. And that's how it looks on the Punnett square. Now let's do something with a recessive trait such as albino. Since it's a recessive trait for the animal to have the phenotype of an albino, it must be homozygous for albino and have the albino allele on both chromosomes. So in this case, both parents are gonna be visual albinos and the Punnett square will be a, the same simple Punnett square because dad can only pass on albino, mom can only pass on albino, and therefore all the babies will be homozygous for albino and will therefore all be 100% visual albinos. Now this same exact technique works with incomplete dominant traits too. In the case of homozygous animals, for example, say a super pastel ball python, say both parents were super pastels. Both parents are gonna have the genotype pastel and pastel, pastel and pastel. Both chromosomes will have the pastel allele on them. And so again, the same simple Punnett square. Pastel gene can only be passed on from dad and the pastel gene can only be passed on from mom. So all the babies are going to be super pastels because they will be homozygous for the pastel trait. Are you with me so far? Remember I said I'm tired. I, I hope this is making sense to you guys. Uh, if not, you please feel free to contact me. I will love to talk about this stuff. I can talk about this stuff all day long just in case I'm not coming across clear enough on this video. Now let's take it a step further and get a little more complex with the Punnett square and we'll do a head albino to head albino pairing. This will work for any simple recessive trait. Now when you have an animal that is heterozygous, remember that means that it has two different alleles on the chromosome. So let's use albino again. Dad has one allele for albino and the other allele is the wild type allele. And then let's do the same thing with mom. Also has one albino allele and one normal allele. This makes them heterozygous for the albino trait. In the case of a recessive trait like albino, the phenotype will be the wild type animal, the normal animal, but it's still carrying the trait 
poor albino, even though it looks like a normal animal. This punnet scrub will have more spaces now because there are more possibilities to be had in the clutch. It'll look something more like this. So now you have more possible outcomes for the offspring. And so dad has the possibility to pass on the albino allele or the normal allele. Mom, same thing. She can pass on albino or normal. And then you take your cross, you come across from this side, albino allele, albino allele, and to this square, you come over here, albino allele, normal allele. In this square, you cross here, come down, albino allele, normal allele. And the last square, come across, normal allele, normal allele. So as you can see here, you have one quarter chance of producing a homozygous albino animal, which will be a visual albino. You have two in four chances of producing an animal that is het albino. So since it's a recessive trait again, it will look like a normal, but it will be carrying the albino trait. And then you have one quarter chance for producing normal animals. Now this doesn't mean that if you have four eggs that two are gonna be head albino, one is gonna be normal, and one is gonna be albino. This simply means that each egg has a one quarter chance to be albino, two quarter chance or 50% chance to be head albino, or a one quarter normal. And that's where you come up with the phrase 50% pos head. With a pairing like this, all the animals that are normal have a 50% chance of being head albino. But the only way to prove out if that animal actually is is to breed it and find out if it's carrying the trait through breeding. Now this same type of Punnett square will work for incomplete dominate traits as well. Let's do pastel again, the incomplete dominate trait for pastel, but we'll do animals that are heterozygous for the pastel trait. So their genotype will look more like this, carrying one allele for the pastel trait and one normal allele. Now remember again, capital letter means that it's carrying a morph. Lowercase means it's a wild type allele. So mom and dad are both pastels, and the Punnett square will look just as it did with the head albinos. So dad can pass on the pastel gene, or he can pass on the normal gene. Mom can pass on the pastel gene, or the normal gene. Here again, pastel and pastel. And here again, pastel and normal, pastel and normal, and then the final square, normal and normal. So you've got one quarter chance to produce a super pastel or a homozygous pastel and two quarter chance to produce a regular pastel or an animal that is heterozygous for the pastel trait. Now since it's an incomplete dominant trait, you are going to visually see a difference in that animal, which is a regular pastel versus the homozygous animal, which is the super pastel. And then of course, you've got your one quarter chance to produce normals. Are we having fun yet? <laughs> it's making sense to you guys? It makes sense up here to me, so I'm hoping that I'm conveying it in a way that makes sense to you too. And again, this is really a tough subject to try and get across to somebody on a video. If I could talk to you in person, it would be so much easier for me to explain because you could ask questions back and forth. So I'm really doing my best here <laughs> to try and get it across on the video. I hope it's making sense. Now let's move on to the Punnett Square with a retic morph. This is more complicated if Punnett squares or different genetic stuff is still a brand new thing for you. This might be a bit confusing. Even if you know a little bit about it, it still might be confusing. Let's take, for example, the Clark albino strains for reticulated pythons. Two purple alleles on the chromosome make a purple albino. Two white alleles on the chromosome make a white albino. And you can also have animals that have purple allele and a white allele on the respective chromosomes. This makes a lavender albino retic. Let's say we're gonna pair a lavender albino with a white phase albino. Dad is the lavender. He's carrying the purple, the purple phase allele and the white phase allele, which makes him a lavender. Mom is carrying the white phase allele on both chromosomes. Punnett square is gonna look just the same as it did with the head to head pairings four squares of possibilities. Dad can pass on the purple allele or the white phase allele. Mom can pass on only the white phase allele 
so I messed it up a little bit. Mom can only pass on the white phase allele, so there are actually only two possibilities from this clutch. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that on camera that I messed up so you can guys can see it's okay to mess up. So dad's gonna pass on purple. Mom's gonna pass on the white phase. And then dad can pass on white phase. And mom's again, only going to be able to pass on white phase. So the results of that clutch would be one half lavender albino, which is the genotype of purple and white phase and half white phase albino, which is the genotype white and white. Okay, we're gonna do one more pairing before my brain explodes and hopefully before your brain explodes. And it will be a classic ball python pairing that I've heard asked time after time in many forums, which is what will I get if I pair my bumblebee to a normal? And this is gonna be a more complex Punnett square. There are gonna be more possibilities and there's gonna be more spaces, more combos. So let's take a look at what the genotype looks like for a bumblebee. A bumblebee is a pastel spider ball, ball python. And so <clears throat> a bumblebee is an animal that is heterozygous for both the pastel and spider trait. Let's have dad be the bumblebee. And so he's got one allele for pastel, one normal allele across from that, one allele for spider, and of course a normal allele. So dad has the possibility of passing on the pastel gene and also has the possibility of passing on the spider gene. And for each of those traits, he also has the potential to pass on normal. And mom only has the potential to pass on normal traits. So dad has the possibility of passing on pastel and spider, or passing on only pastel and not spider, or passing on only spider and not pastel, or neither. And mom's not passing on any traits, she's normal, so both lowercase. So the first pairing, we've got pastel from dad, normal from mom. Spider from dad, normal from mom. Second possibility, pastel from dad, normal from mom. Normal from dad, normal from mom. Third possibility, normal for da from dad, normal from mom. Spider from dad, normal from mom. And then the last possibility is all normal alleles from both parents. So you have a pastel spider, which would be the bumblebee, one quarter chance to get that, one quarter chance of getting just a pastel, one quarter chance of getting just spider, and one quarter chance of getting normals. Okay, my brain is fried. My brain was fried before I started this video. If you want to learn more about this, contact me. Look me up on Facebook. Let's chat about it. If it's, it's so hard to explain this stuff <clears throat> without having somebody ask questions back. Leave me some comments down below. Let me know what horrible job I did of explaining it or let me know if it made sense to you. Don't just click dislike if it didn't make sense. If it didn't make sense to you, let me know what it was about it that didn't make sense so I can help you. Otherwise, I can't. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, I hope that that wasn't too painful. I hope it wasn't as painful for you as it was for me because I am definitely hurting. But next week, we're going to take it a little easier on the brain and just check out some awesome people with their awesome animals from the Pomona Super Show. Until then, you've been watching Triple B TV. Y'all take care.